Hi, I'm Karen. We're in the Music Library for WFMU, the longest running freeform radio station in the country. We're going to be talking to Ken Friedman, station manager, program director, and a DJ, as well as one of my favorite DJs, Terry T with the Cherry Blossom Clinic. We're going to find out what goes on behind the scenes and why WFMU is the favorite among musicians from Lou Reed to the new pornographers. Hi, Ken. Hi. So we right now are in the music library, which is indeed a music geek's heaven. I love this place. There is vinyl, there are CDs, there's even cassettes. Where does this all come from? The physical library that we're standing in now has come from uh, artists and record labels from all over the world who've sent us, for the most part, free copies of the records so that we can play them on the air. We also have a digital library with an additional 230,000 songs. What are some of the inventive ways that WFMU makes money? Uh, we're a non-commercial radio station. Yes, we're not allowed to sell commercials. So we, uh, we beg for money once a year. And we're actually very proud of the fact that we only beg once a year, for the most part. Um, and then we also have a record fair once a year that we raise a bit of money at. When somebody tunes in, what are they going to hear? Uh, they could hear just about anything, depending on what time of week they're, they're uh, tuning in. Um, you know, they could hear a beautiful pop song or a talk show or a comedy show or um, music from Egypt from the 1920s or uh, experimental electronic music that was made last week. But we try to let just about anybody on the air, provided they have a really great, distinct, creative radio voice, you know, kind of like an author's voice, somebody good to spend quality radio time with if you're a listener. The overriding format is uh, a real devotion and appreciation for the craft of radio. Hi, Terry. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Awesome show tonight. Well, thank you for complimenting me on my show. I'll go on. <laughs> go on, go on. No, sorry, that's my default de facto. How and why did you get involved with WFMU? It's not easy to get on FMU. It's, it's like the Harvard of college radio. Like at the time, it was college radio station. At the time, we had to submit to like a committee of people. And I'd submitted at least two, if not three demos, before I got a show. And that's what happened when I got a show. From what I hear, mm -hmm. the DJs don't get paid. The DJs do not get paid on WFMU. The only reason why DJs do it is, I think, because they're insane. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's because it's fun. There's a marathon going on to raise money for WFMU. How do you as a DJ participate? So all the WFMU DJs um, have to try to earn money during their show and uh, people call in and they pledge and they donate. So we've got to like, it's, we're having our own rent party. How do you think your show has evolved over the years? You've been doing this for a while now. Right, <laughs> you know, my show has evolved during the, over the years. Um, in the 90s, just I just played a lot of, you know, 90s indie rock and stuff. In 2000, what happened was, um, in 1999, I actually got cancer. And uh, I had to go away from the station for a while I came back and I just, I don't know, I did a 180 in my life and I changed my show around and I present a lot of live music now and that's how the Cherry Blossom Clinic evolved. Like I just was like, I want to live and I want live music and I just, I just, there's a whole like thing with interacting and people and just the joy of music, literally the joy of music and I'm like, this, you know what? There's so much misery and it's in the world and it's so hard to be happy, but music makes people happy. So that's so that's how that's how it evolved basically.
an artist and a musician. Who and what influences you now? Who influences the subway influences me. The subway goes by and it's, it's really intertwined in all of my music. And I'm like, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> like hot sauce on that, you know? It's, it's the flavor of Brooklyn. And I, I take pride in that. When did you start incorporating your art with the music? Um, I've been incorporating the art since the beginning, which is like the original inspiration it was basically androgynous figures that were inspired by me as a DJ looking out into the crowd and seeing just people. Um, and that's evolved into these folks over here now. And what is your overall dream for your future? This is the dream. I mean, every day is the dream. I'm doing what I love and making art and music touching people with it, so that is the dream. You're very lucky. Yes, thank you very <laughs> much, as are you. Thank Love you. Thank you. inspiration for opening Gentleman Farmer? Well, it to share the way we live, what we eat, and uh, I mean, we always used to have like a big dinner friends at home on doing crazy recipes. We really like big eaters, and we just wanted to share that with the New York City people. Walking into Gentleman Farmer is like entering a cozy, warm farmhouse kitchen. Tell me about the decor especially the ceiling, which I'm fascinated with in its history. Our ceiling is a reclaimed oak ceiling. It came from upstate New York. We were told their floorboards, they're about 150 years old. All of our tables and benches were made from oak beams that were originally from a building in Tribeca. And uh, there are some personal touches too, like my grandmother's copper pots and pans on the walls. Tell me about your seasonal menu. Well, I like to work with small farm from New York or New Jersey. Some people take who care very much with their work and the produce they meet. And uh, um, farmer market is one of my principal suppliers. Beverly, how are you inspired to create the wine list? I was just trying to source wines that I like to drink and those wines tend to be terroir driven wines as they say. Do you find there's a big difference between organic and non-organic wines? It's very likely that if a winemaker makes a commitment to avoid agrochemicals and to avoid pesticides and to raise a healthy vineyard and you know, produce the healthiest grapes possible, it probably carries over into the wine. What impression do you want people to take away with them after dining at Gentleman Farmer? Well, I think we hope that people feel like they're eating in the home of their good friends while they're here, albeit friends that cook very well.